2023 is actually over. Crazy. And I'm not gonna lie, it's been a good one. In a year where it felt as if society has truly paved a path and has made real groundwork in regards to getting back out there, being social, reconnecting, getting our butts in seats, having a good time, and making memories. Pretty much just moving on as a society from UNSPECIFIED VIRUS OF UNKNOWN ORIGIN and don't get me wrong, while there have surely been some missteps, mishandles, and straight up shit stains on a screen trying to masquerade as film and or TV shows in the year of 2023, YouTube, Twitter, the Access Media, the Hollywood shills, the pretend adults, and the internet as a whole will definitely make you feel as if the Hollywood landscape is just a big ol' pile of rotting and decaying cinemaphiles in a seemingly never-ending plague of reboots, sequels, requels, rehashes, and whatever else fits in the box labeled Handle with Care, Endangered Species Inside, Hollywood Creativity. But that's not actually the case, and we've definitely gotten some bangers this time around. From one of the biggest years in cinema history when it comes to video game adaptations, to achieving what most would have called the impossible only a couple months prior in regards to live action anime, and what was quite possibly the biggest and most captivating cultural event to hit theaters post Endgame with Barbenheimer, becoming a true social event that catapulted much needed life into what was at the time, a very decrepit box office. And while I have made separate individualized videos for all of these nominees and eventual winners, let's go ahead and check out the best of 2023. Yeah, starting off with Almost, but just not quite. In order to not spend too much time on these two, seeing how they're on the outside looking in, you bunch of losers, it's not to say I didn't have a fun time, and in reality, that's not even doing these films justice. I had a good time watching these films the first time, and... Well, that was about it. While I can marvel at the accomplishments and achievements that the creator was able to pull off with such a low budget, the rewatchability is where my problems lie. And in regards to Super Mario, I don't know, man, I'll just see you next year or something for your sequel. Chris Pratt isn't going anywhere. <laughs> ah, looking back on how poorly this movie did at the box office, we all owe Tom Cruise an apology. The true lasting flames and the dying embers that is the movie star don't get me wrong, he didn't help himself coming out only a week before the previously mentioned cultural event that was Barbenheimer, but it's not like Tom Cruise himself was truly able to know that was going to happen. Unlucky, I guess. Even while performing poorly at the box office, Tom Cruise still delivers his trademark high-octane action sequences, incredible use of practical effects and on-location settings, engaging musical score, and well... It will never go unnoticed when Haley Atwell joins your franchise, am I right? Introduced all the way back in 2014. God, that is so crazy. Who would have thought that almost a decade later that out of the cosmic space-bound crew led by an idiot, a rabbit, and a tree would be rounding out and completing the fifth trilogy in the MCU franchise. And what was easily and highly regarded as one of the better entries in the MCU not only post-Endgame, but in its entirety, Guardians of the Galaxy 3 takes you on an emotional roller coaster as you watch a true character-driven story helmed by Rocket, aka Rabbit. While being able to introduce a villain that the audience could have true disdain for as much as our protagonist, with a return to form when it comes to the action side of Marvel, James Gunn was for better or for worse, able to give most, if not all of his characters that we have come to know, love, and hate, a satisfying send-off into the cosmos. This is one of those entries that really makes you reflect back on how long a year actually is. Releasing all the way back in March, The Last of Us Season 1 was a true talk of the town show. Or on Twitter every week when new episodes were released. But it's been a long time since I've seen something like that, honestly. From fans of the game to noobs such as myself who can't hop off Apex Legends, HBO was able to craft and 
tell a compelling story for the masses, genuinely have some pretty tense scenes, giving Bella Ramsey a bigger platform to turn herself into a household name, actually making Pedro Pascal show up to the office, and promoting the message in an actual way that audiences can get behind, you know, with good characters and character writing. Shocker. Hmm, Gen V was a weird one to me. While I didn't really expect the show overall to get this high up on the list, and in reality, I don't really know why. With the boys being such a banger of a series, and the show that I genuinely like watching week by week, I'm not quite sure why I had so many skepticisms of a spinoff show of an ongoing show that I actually enjoy. Weird. Nevertheless, Gen V was surprisingly great, seamlessly transferring over the tone, energy, character writing, and sheer ridiculousness that its mother show had to offer. And well, in a college setting, things can get escalated pretty quickly. Man, a movie that could be categorized as true cinema. Christopher Nolan does it again, baby. As someone who is in the vast minority of audiences and actually enjoyed Tenet, it goes without saying, unfortunately, but fortunately, I'm a true Christopher Nolan stan. Therefore, it feels pretty incredible for me to say that I really think he has delivered his best film yet. Oppenheimer not only delivers on every single aspect of what it means to go to the movies and checks every single checkbox when it comes to cinema making, but Nolan really crafts and depicts an interesting biopic and pushes his boundaries to the limit to enthrall and create one of the most immersive movie-going experiences I've had in my entire life. And it sounds crazy, and I don't think I've ever really said it before, maybe in my individualized review of the video, but despite the complaints from the casuals about the runtime, this was one of the only films that I can truly remember, not one, not a sole person, got up and went to the bathroom. I'm just saying, that's pretty insane. Wow, what a random ass banger from Japan here in December for a movie that is some people's contender and what could really be argued as movie of the year. Unlike the MCU fell Godzilla in the MonsterVerse over here in the West, which I said even in my review of the movie, I do like, I do enjoy both iterations, but much to my surprise, the star of the show wasn't even the monster himself, but the main protagonist Koichi and the character writing that flows alongside him. And that's not to say Godzilla himself wasn't catching my eyeballs or having my mouth drop a time or two. I said it then and I'll go ahead and repeat myself here. That Godzilla atomic breath was, by far, one of the most destructive forces that I have ever seen from a soul character on the big screen in a really long time. Oh, and did I mention that this was only made on a budget of 15 million? Incredible. Not gonna lie, this is a true surprise, and that's probably an understatement. It's hard to truly fathom and putting to words the absolute triumph that Netflix's live-action adaptation of One Piece was able to accomplish. From someone who has watched his fair share of anime, almost dangerously diving into weeb territory every now and again. Out of all of the mainstream anime in that wave that hit the West so hard in 2020, besides Mob Psycho, one Piece was easily next in line for a show that I could have had an argument to claim was unadaptable. Kind of like how people felt about that comic book The Watchmen if you remember the time of the yesteryears. And while, yes, as with most shonen anime, the One Piece anime only continues to grow in terms of scale, scope, power scaling, world building, visuals, and stakes with each and every arc, with season one alone, Netflix has asked us to do our part in giving them the benefit of the doubt when it comes to future seasons by delivering us a masterclass of a season right from the jump. It's a rare occasion, but I commend Netflix for swallowing their pride, respecting the source material, and willingly handing over the reins to Oda when needed. 
it's a powerful thing when a studio and fans are on the same page when it comes to the vision of a specific movie or series. And Netflix's live action adaptation of One Piece is what can be when that type of partnership and vision is created, seen, and fulfilled. Let me tell you, for first and second place, we were truly looking at a photo finish. We have now entered the realm of 10 out of 10s, S tier territory, with the movie concluding the story of the infamous character of John Wick, hopefully. The John Wick franchise couldn't have ended on a bigger banger if it tried, with bigger action set pieces, grander stakes, over the top villains, multiple countries of on location shooting, and most of all, more John Wick. In the age of superhero films and reboots that we live in now, not to contradict myself at the beginning of the video saying that there's no creativity, but John Wick and the character that John Wick represents as a whole in regards to the audience, the landscape of Hollywood, and most of all, originality is priceless. And it sounds crazy, but in the same sense, is much like the Indiana Jones of our generation, a character birthed and bathed in originality that I believe will continue and hold true the test of time as generations continue. An actual legendary movie character. Man, this feels so good. For me. I know this is a controversial take. No, not for the dumbass reasons on Twitter, but because Tobey Maguire was just so damn good. But Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse was peak Spider-Man content. I knew even at the time when I was watching this movie for the first time with my homies and when the credits rolled, I looked over to my mate and I was like, yeah, what's topping this? Outside of actual anime, the animation quality and technique is on a whole nother level compared to its fellow contenders. Miles Morales is one of the most relatable, interesting, and fun Spider-Mans to date unless you're in your 50s and boring as hell. As well as being one of the only superhero films to tackle the idea of a multiverse and actually make the idea comprehensive, not only for us the audience, but for the characters in-universe as well. Miguel O'Hara is peak villain, Miles Morales pretty much destroying two universes by becoming Spider-Man was peak plot twist. Come on, yo. Prowler Miles Morales. This man is a menace, bro. Don't mess with him. I rest my case. Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse was absolute peak cinema, peak Spider-Man, and the best of 2023. <sighs> man, that felt good. Of course, as always, I want to thank you guys for watching the video. And if you enjoyed, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this. I mean, what more can I say? This was a good year in regards to entertainment. I don't know what to tell you, and don't let Twitter tell you otherwise. I mentioned in my last couple of videos that I was still figuring out how I wanted to structure this video, and while I'm still going to be working on it in future iterations, I decided to go with the skill-based matchmaking tactic and decided to not split it up into TV shows and movies and just combine the two. It just feels more fair. It's not about what I want. It's about what's fair! But with that being said, I definitely want to see everybody else's list. So make sure you comment down below your best of 2023. Doesn't matter what type of media. I just want to hear you guys' opinions. I should say follow me on Twitter. I did start a whole new account for this channel. So I'm going to start promoting that more. Again, I want to thank you guys for watching this video and watching all of my videos throughout the year of 2023. Make 2024 your best. Make sure to like and subscribe. If you enjoyed, why not click on more while you're at it? Otherwise, that's all the words I got for you today. Bye.